Lang Fam, it's Beth and welcome back to my channel. I feel super close to the camera right now, but uh, that's okay because today we are going to be getting a little up close and personal as I answer all of the questions that you guys asked me. Well, not all of them, but like I will try to get through as many as I can. I don't want to keep you guys waiting for that long because at the end of this, we are picking our winner for the Aristocats giveaway and I am so excited for one of you to win this prize set and so that I can mail it out to one of you. We had over 200 people enter so thank you to everyone who entered, submitted a question. A lot of you guys asked actually very similar questions. I got a lot of repeats so I will definitely be trying to answer all of the questions that were asked most as well as a couple ones that were just really funny or that made me laugh when I was kind of going through and reading all of them the other day. So I do have them on my phone here, so let's go ahead and answer some questions. I think Buki is about to join us for a little Q&A. Hi, what's up? All right, in your personal opinion, what is the best month to visit Tokyo? I want to take a trip there in 2020 and go to the parks. So obviously my favorite time of year is going to be late march and early april because that is cherry blossom season everything is so pink and adorable and i just absolutely love the merchandise honestly any time of year especially for tokyo is very good to go and visit if you're gonna visit like kyoto and osaka and other places further south i would definitely avoid summer because it gets so hot that's down where I lived and like, yeah, the humidity and stuff, it is just oppressive and horrible. But Tokyo is pretty good all year round. They do get snow and stuff, very little, but it is still like cold and snowy. So take that into consideration if you're thinking winter. And if you are going in 2020, I would maybe avoid summertime as that is when the Olympics are going on. So it's gonna be a little crazy and probably expensive and hard to find hotels. Unless you wanna go for the Olympics, then you do you, you go. That would be so awesome, honestly. We had thought about trying to go for the Olympics, but I'm not sure that it'll be possible. Yeah, it's the Olympics, it would be fun. But uh, long story short, I guess my answer is the only time I would avoid going to Tokyo and Japan in general would be Golden Week, which is the very first week of May because everyone in Japan gets that week off as a holiday. So it is just really crowded. Everyone is traveling and that's when like Tokyo Disney like hits capacity and things get crazy. So I would just avoid then. Ooh, Buki agrees. She's getting real cuddly. Hi. If you could live in any Disney movie, which would you choose? That's a hard one, maybe, maybe not. I feel like I'm going to choose Enchanted because I could see what being in 2D animation feels like, but then I can also come back to the real world and live my life. So uh, Enchanted seems pretty good. And I mean, who doesn't love New York City? Have you always had cats? So actually, I grew up always having dogs. I was very much a dog person, loved dogs, still do. Always thought I would get dogs when I moved out. Johnny never had any pets growing up. We were kind of waiting until we had an apartment that we felt was large enough for a dog just because I feel really bad keeping them enclosed in such a small space. So we kind of waited and then our cats both kind of fell into our laps. They were both rescues. Buki was found on the street. Meeple, one of my relatives found and couldn't take him. So we took him more on all of my cats will be coming soon when I do like a whole video kind of on them. I had started to film it and then Meeple got sick and had to put that on pause. So I mean, that will be coming shortly in the future and you guys can learn all about my cats then. There is one of them. This is Buki. Her name is Buki because it's short for Kabuki because she has really pretty thick eyeliner. Man, she just really, really wants to be up here with us. All right, this one is a little long to read, so bear with me, but I did really like this question. 
I often get from other Americans that I am weird or not true American because I want to live in other countries, specifically Japan and South Korea. Even my friend who is from Hong Kong, here in the US on visa, says to me, you aren't like most Americans. I am devoting my university degree in hopes to be an English teacher in Japan and South Korea and possibly Hong Kong one day. I have embraced, studied Eastern culture and languages since I was in elementary school. I am almost 20 now. I love my country, but I also want to live in the places that have inspired me since early youth. Do people ever judge you for previously living abroad or judge you for your love of Japan? Any advice for people who may judge me for this? I usually don't pay attention to mean people, but it makes me a bit troubled when I am deemed not a true American when I am born and raised in America. Whew. Okay, so you sound so much like me. I always had this weird fascination with other countries, whether it was from Asian countries or not. So I always knew that I wanted to like travel, see the world, go live abroad. Uh, for the longest time, I just thought that would be in Europe, particularly France. I loved Paris and France and just everything about it. I studied French in high school. And then I got really into Japan and Japanese and made the switch to Asian countries. And I don't think just because you have interest in other countries doesn't mean you are not American. I think it is so important to have cultural understanding. That is how we can all come together and get along as one. And I think it's really important to travel and see what other countries and people are like and see how we're different. So I definitely don't think that's like weird or not American at all. I think more so what people maybe are saying by it being not American is that outside of the US, a lot of people have the stereotype that Americans never leave their country. We don't have passports, which that is kind of true. Like the amount of people in the US that hold passports is up, but it is around 30% only, which is so low. But when you think about it, it also kind of makes sense because America is such a big country. We've got 50 different states to explore and you could basically spend your lifetime exploring all of the different states and still not see anything. Whereas everyone else in Asia or Europe, they live in a smaller country. It is so easy for them to hop on a train with their passport, go see other countries and travel more. Whereas for us, most Americans just travel within the US because it's kind of similar. So that's honestly my take on it. I don't think it means that you're not like loving your country, you're not a good American. I think it's just that most Americans don't actually travel that much and I wish they did. I think it's definitely made me a different person being able to travel. A lot of you probably don't know this, but before I started YouTube, and I'll kind of talk about this again later, I had a travel blog and I wrote and did travel photography, so I've kind of been all over and it's been really awesome just to get to see other parts of the world and how people live their lives and it's definitely made me a lot more, I guess, understanding and kind of tolerant as a person and I just think it's really important to travel more. And obviously I lived abroad, I worked in Hong Kong teaching English for two years and honestly ever since moving back most people would say that it is a positive having that on your resume and having that opportunity to go out and see the world. So you do you, try not to listen to people that are calling you like weird or any sort of like hate, stuff like that. I think it is a really good and healthy thing and I wish more people would do it, so go do it. Sorry for the long kind of answer on that. That's just kind of my take on everything. What is the best way to get merch from Japan? I got this question so much. As you guys may or may not know, I have a lot of friends that still live in Japan, so I typically use them when I need pickups, but they are gonna be leaving the country soon, so I am starting to dabble with figuring out different ways to get merchandise in kind of a cost-effective way. Um, when I find something good, I will let you guys know. How many Disney ears do you have? Too many. No, I have no idea. I mean, if you're talking like strictly Disney ears and not ears that I've made, maybe like 25, maybe 20, I don't know. Not like too many, I mean that's kind of a lot, but I feel like I use them and I wear them. I wear them in different videos. I'll start wearing them more when we go to the parks. Um, 
Yeah, but if you count like total ears, it's probably around like 30, 35, we'll see. I'm gonna put together like an entire ear wall, I think, where they are all on the wall instead of just like 16 of them. So uh, we'll find out soon, because right now they are all packed away on a truck somewhere making their way to Orlando. Which Disney park outside of the US do you want to visit most? Easy, Shanghai Disney Resort, because that is the only park I have never been to, and it is killing me that I still have not been, and it's been almost three years. So uh, fingers crossed that 2020 is the year to make that happen. So this is a really interesting question, not Disney related, but if you had to pick only three colors to see for the rest of your life, what would they be? That is like a really intense question. Obviously, I love pink, so uh, I definitely want to continue to see pink. I am also going to pick orange because of Buki, because if I just see black and white, if I can also see orange, at least I can see my little Buki in full color or as she should look. And for the last color, that's really hard. I think I'm actually going to go with green just because it is such a natural color. There is so much green out there in the world that it would still make me really happy if I could go and see like the grass and the trees and everything like that. Good question though. What are you most excited about moving to Florida? What will you miss about the Windy City, Chicago? So Florida, I am definitely looking forward to nicer, warm weather. Chicago really only has nice weather for like three months out of the year, and then the rest of me is just kind of miserable. I'm also really excited that it's just a different change of pace. It is a little bit slower, maybe not as like stressful and hectic, like living in Chicago. We are basically like a mini New York. People here are just like really busy on the street, unfriendly, and I feel like it'll be definitely a nice change of pace and just a kind of healthier lifestyle for us. Things that I'm going to miss about Chicago, obviously all of my friends and family, since most of them are still going to be here, and also the food, because we just have really good food in Chicago. We've got a lot of Asian food, a lot of food from honestly all over the world, and it is really, really good. We are definitely a little concerned about the food situation in Orlando, but uh, they're, they're an up and coming city. I feel like more and more stuff is popping up constantly, so hopefully, hopefully it'll be good. When is the first time you went to Disney? My first ever trip to Disney was to Walt Disney World. I was five years old and then I didn't go back until last year. So uh, there was quite a gap in between. So I have only actually been to Walt Disney World twice, technically three times if you count Johnny and me going a couple of weeks ago, but all we did was go to Disney Springs and the Contemporary. So didn't really walk through any gates to get in the park, so I'm not really sure if you count that or not. What made you fall in love with Disney? Honestly, I have no idea. I've tried asking my parents, they have no idea. As a kid, I just had this affinity with Minnie Mouse. I loved her, I would always wanna dress up as her, I would walk around with my little Minnie Mouse stuffed animal, my parents would take me to meet and greets for her, and I was just obsessed. And then I would always, of course, watch like my Disney VHS tapes, and it's just basically what I grew up with and have just never grown out of much to my parents' surprise, but there was really nothing in particular that triggered it. It was just definitely always this like deep-seated love since I was basically born. Orange bird or figment? Orange bird, figment is creepy. Beth, would you do a video series of all the holidays and traditions of Japan? Watching your prior videos of the Japanese New Year and Hina Matsuri holidays were so very interesting. Do you one day hope to return to Japan? What drew you to learning Japanese? And did you study Japanese history at the university? 
I would happily make a video on Japan. I would need to figure out kind of a good way to go about doing that, but if you guys are interested in learning more about like Japan and my experiences there and like what it's like to live there, I would totally be happy to make those videos and teach a little more about the culture. So do I hope to return to Japan to visit? Absolutely, like I hope to go as much as possible to live there. No, I find living there very difficult, except for in very like short time periods. I guess I could make a whole video on that as well, but definitely don't plan to return there to live. We are pretty much gonna live in the US, I think, for the rest of our lives, at least as far as I know now. Especially now that we have cats, it would be a lot harder to move overseas. And did I study Japanese history in university? Yes, I have two degrees. One of them is in photography, the other is in East Asian languages and culture, and my emphasis was on Japan and Japanese. So basically all of the coursework that I did was on like Japanese literature and art and history and culture and all of that sort of stuff which is why I ended up going to school in Japan for a little bit. <laughs> Will you be doing pin pickups once you live closer to Walt Disney World? So I wouldn't say I'm going to become a pickup person, but I will be doing some pickups on occasion. It's probably gonna be like really limited slots just because I don't wanna like do too much. I don't wanna risk my pass and not be able to enjoy Disney, but uh, Short answer, yes, I am happy to pick up stuff when you guys need it, so just feel free to send me a message on Instagram and I'll see what I can do. Now that you'll be living in Orlando, how often do you think you will actually visit Walt Disney World? Um, probably weekly, honestly, maybe even more. Like Disney Springs probably once a week for sure as well. Like we live about 10 minutes from the parks, so uh, yeah, I'll, I'll be there a lot. So this question I also got a lot. It was, how did Johnny and I meet? No, we did not meet when I was living in Hong Kong. That was actually what brought me to Hong Kong. Johnny and I met at university here in Illinois. We both went to the University of Illinois down in Champaign-Urbana, and that was where we met. And it was because of him that I wanted to go to Hong Kong for a little bit, meet all of his family before we got married, and then we just ended up staying for like two years because we loved it so much. How do you decide what you want to collect? Tsum Tsums, figurines, pins, characters. So honestly, I don't have like a method for what I want to collect. I mean, you guys know that I collect pins. I do have like a small like Tsum Tsum collection, though I wouldn't even really call it a collection. It's basically just like the items that spoke to me, that I liked, that I wanted, so I bought them. I would say the only thing Disney-wise that I really like have collections of would be pins, and that's just solely based on what makes me happy. So it doesn't necessarily have to be like a particular like, character or movie. I do have like a miscellaneous, like I call it my personal pin board of pins that just speak to me, have meaning to me, and yeah, I just kind of go with Basically whatever makes me happy that I wanna look at every day because why have stuff in your house that makes you unhappy or stressed out when you see it if you think your collection is too big? Downsize, you know, keep only what you love. Murray, condo, everything is basically what I live by. <laughs> Do you have a cherry blossom tattoo? So I do not, and that's kind of a funny question because I don't have any tattoos. I am a really big wimp when it comes to pain that I was just never able to like bring myself to like sit through a tattoo. But I have always said that if I were to get a tattoo, it would be one of two things. It would either be something cherry blossom related or maybe even like the logo that I made that I use of the little cherry blossom with like the Mickey head silhouette in it or it would be, hi, yeah. <laughs> or it would be kind of this like traditional purple Japanese rope that they use in kabuki performances. They like wear it, it's like a really thick like rope kind of tied in a bow shape and I would get that just to kind of symbolize my little kabuki buki girl here. Just because she is the first pet that I ever had on my own and had to take care of and I just love her to pieces so I, 
I wouldn't mind having that on me forever. But for now, yeah, I don't have any tattoos. Yeah, nothing like too exciting, sorry. Next, we have, how did you decide on where in Orlando to live? What type of research did you do before moving? So, um, yeah, we basically looked at where Disney was, drew like a little perimeter around that, and then we started looking from there because we knew we wanted to be close to the parks because we would be going so often. Our friends that are down there and their parents are also like very close, like 10, 15 minutes from the park. So we knew that we wanted to be fairly close to them as well, just because once they move back from Japan, like we want to be able to live close to our friends, to see them, have a network down there. And then it basically just came down to what areas are safe, what apartment complexes and things like that are not just for like Disney college program kids because we didn't really want to live in that environment. So we just basically narrowed it down from there and we had a list of places to check out. We flew down, we looked at all of them and we picked a place. And now we're moving there. <laughs> Not the most scientific way to do it, but I mean, it worked for us, hopefully. I mean, I'll give you an update on if it didn't work and if we're like miserable there, but hopefully we picked a good location. Where do you get the ideas for your ear designs? I'm honestly one of those people that would rather go to the parks to have like a photo shoot, get like Instagram content than ride rides. I mean, I do a good mix of both. I don't just go there for like photo purposes, but I do plan all of my outfits. So I kind of decide on the ears that I want based on either the colors I'm wearing or if there's like a character that I want to bound as like, yeah, basically that. Of course I had to make a pair of alien ears just because that's Johnny's favorite character. I am going to be working on a few ears for some of my favorite characters in the future when I've got more time, but uh, yeah, that's basically how I've gone about doing that. How many times have you visited a Disney park? Um, so Walt Disney World, like I said, I have only been to twice. Disneyland, I have been to three or four times. Tokyo Disney Resort, I have been to three times. Paris Disney Resort, I have been to once. I have never been to Shanghai. And Hong Kong Disneyland, I don't even think I could count the amount of times that we went because when we lived in Hong Kong, we were so close to the park, we would go like two or three times a month over the course of two years. So I mean, you do the math and it's somewhere around there. Besides obviously Disney, what are your other interests, hobbies, etc.? So I am also a wedding photographer. I do lots of other photography projects as well. I love photography. I love crafting, sewing. I love getting to be outside. I love especially being on the water. I love like kayaking and boating and all of that stuff. So I am like really excited to be moving to Orlando for that purpose as well, just to like be outside more, get out on the lakes because we don't really have a whole lot of that here in Chicago, obviously. I mean, like there's Lake Michigan, but I'm not really gonna be taking Johnny kayaking on Lake Michigan. And then I also love to travel and just like try new foods, try new things, hang out with my friends, and yeah, just all of that fun stuff. Okay, so this one is really hard. What is your global Disney park ranking from best to worst to still need to visit? Okay, so let's start with still need to visit because Shanghai is the only park that I need to visit. So now let's do best to worst. Tokyo Disney Sea, hands down, the absolute best. It is my favorite park by far. After that, I would probably say Epcot because I absolutely love Epcot as well. More so for like the World Showcase, but I just love it. I love it so much. After that, mm, I would probably say Disneyland out in California, just because that is a lot of fun. There's a lot to do there, and that park also just has my heart. From there, and I'm doing this not like with a my bias, but like a what I think is actually the best park, because one of my favorite parks is Hong Kong Disneyland, but it's a pretty small park. They don't have a whole lot to do there. I know like other people don't always love it just because it is so small. So I'm trying to be like fairly practical instead of biased for this. So I would then probably say Magic Kingdom at Walt Disney World, 
Tokyo Disneyland just because it is like a carbon copy of Magic Kingdom Park. Then I would probably put Hong Kong Disneyland followed by Animal Kingdom because there's not like a whole lot to do in Animal Kingdom but I do love animals so it's still really fun to get to go followed by DCA because again, not a whole lot to do in that park, but it has really great photo opportunities and I love all of the California vibes. Then I would say Hollywood Studios just because I have not been there since they have opened Toy Story Land. So before that, again, not a whole lot to do, but I think it's gonna be much higher up on my list once I go again. Then I would probably put the Paris Parks last just because they were the least exciting to me they are going through like this whole like renovation process so that's really good i think they'll be really great once they reopen which i don't think not like reopen but once they are done with the like projects that they are working on which i think is going to be in a year or two but yeah i would probably put those on the bottom of my list sorry paris we know you love marie and all disney cats she is my personal favorite kitty but who is your favorite Disney dog? That's easy, it is Tramp from Lady and the Tramp. That was always another favorite movie of mine growing up and I just love him so much that I actually got a Snowser because of it and yeah, I just definitely will always have a place in my heart for Tramp. When you move, how will you pack your pins? How am I packing my pins? They are coming with us in the car. We did not put them on the truck just because we did not trust that but we purchased a couple of extra pin folios and we put them all in the pin folios and that's basically their little safekeeping little suitcase bag that we're gonna take them in. Any pointers on starting a channel? I've been wanting to do it for so long, especially Disney centered, but I've been putting it off since I only have material for one story time since I really can't afford unboxings or trips at the moment. But I also feel like doing them would make me feel more in the Disney mood. Definitely, my biggest tip is just to start. I wanted to make a YouTube channel for so long and I kind of tried back in like 2012, 2013, not Disney related at all, it was more like travel focused and when I was like living abroad in Hong Kong and honestly it just failed because I didn't really take time to make the content. I didn't want to be in the content myself, I didn't want to put myself on camera, so most of it was just kind of like b-roll of places which is just kind of generic and people, eh, who cares. So I think the biggest thing is just start, do it, put yourself on camera, talk about stuff. You don't even need to spend a lot of money to start a channel. Talk about your favorite Disney movies, like your top five favorite rides, like whatever your experiences are, and you can just start from there. But just put yourself out there, start it, don't put it off, or else you're honestly probably gonna put it off forever and never actually make a channel. So just go do it and let me know your channel if you start one so that I can definitely follow you and watch your journey. All right, we will do just a few more. Now that you will be a Floridian, will you be more likely to take Disney cruises? I am definitely hoping that the answer to that is yes. I have only been on two cruises before and none of them have been Disney cruises, so that is definitely on my bucket list of something to try. What is your favorite ride at any Disney park? I would have to say either Big Grizzly Mountain Runaway Mine Cars from Hong Kong Disneyland or Pooh's Honey Hunt from Tokyo Disneyland. Which is better, Disney World or Disneyland? Uh, Disneyland, I definitely love Disneyland, but I mean, now that we're moving to Walt Disney World, maybe I will change my mind. So uh, ask me again in another like year or so. Favorite Disney food item or snack? So I have always been a churro girl, not necessarily like Disney churros, but just any kind of churro. I love them and I would have said that Although my last trip to Walt Disney World, my friends introduced me to Dole Whip and I finally got to try one and I'm also a sucker for anything pineapple. So uh, that's a really hard toss up, but I don't know. Right now I've definitely been on another like pineapple kick. I've been getting a lot of like pineapple flavored waters and things like that. So uh, I'm gonna say Dole Whip. 
Did Meeple get his name from a Disney movie? So no, Meeple, which is M-E-E-P-L-E, -E -E, I'll put his like name down here. A Meeple is actually like a piece that you have in a board game. It like represents you as a character. It's like the little piece that you move around the board. Uh, Johnny and I also play a lot of games and board games, so that is another one of our hobbies that I didn't list earlier, but we love board games, and so we call him Meeple. But no, nothing Disney related. Can we see Johnny's little green men pin collection? So you are, like I said, going to get a glimpse of it when I kind of do like a bit of our packing videos. You'll see me kind of taking it down off of the board. That is actually only like half of his collection. But once we move and I like put it up on its own board and it's officially like done and good to go and hang on the wall, even though I mean he's still gonna continue collecting and adding more to it. I will be showing you his full collection then. So definitely sit patiently because it is coming. <laughs> Another fun one. How do you go about being so comfortable with cute, pretty pastel things? As I'm getting older, I find it harder to be okay liking things like that as I compare myself to others, which I shouldn't. So I mean, I feel like there's definitely a balance. Like yes, I obviously love the color pink, but that doesn't mean you're like a child or I don't know, like my whole house isn't like pink and filled with toys and Disney stuff. I'll I'll give you guys like a proper apartment tour once we like move and get everything like settled and like furniture in and decorated. I would say our house and things look very normal my Disney stuff is basically contained to my office and I mean like I feel like adults can still wear the color pink like most of my dresses or things that I wear for weddings tend to be like pink or grays or the two mixed together for like a very professional like polished look and yeah you can totally pull off pink in the workplace as an adult and not look like a five-year-old so if you love it embrace it rock it you do you just, you know, don't let other people get you down by stuff that you like. Are you going to the Fairy Tales pin event in August? Yes, I am. If you're going, definitely let me know because I would love to meet all of you guys there. Say hi, get a hug, take some pictures, and yeah, have a good time. I am really excited for it. Is family eligible to win your contest? Who do you love most in the whole wide world and why? Yeah, so this was definitely submitted by Johnny. No, you are not eligible to win. Sorry, someone else is gonna win this prize. And who do I love most since I know that you submitted this? I'm gonna go with my little cat here, Buki. No, I'm just kidding, I love you, but no, you can't win the prize. And last, I feel like this is a really interesting question, so I'm gonna kinda end on this one. It's, are you more interested in Disney parks or Disney movies? That's a really interesting question that's like got my brain like thinking now. Like obviously as a kid I grew up on Disney movies. They're what I know and love and I do still watch them on occasion. I more so listen to like the music when I'm like working, editing on photos or like driving. Like it just is fun, feel good, catchy music and I like to sing Disney songs at karaoke. But I wouldn't say like I'm super obsessed or into one particular movie. So I do feel like I more so just love the parks, I just love, I just love Disney. I love Disney for what it is and bringing people together and how it's so global and it means so much to so many different people. I, I'm just a Disney for Disney person. Not necessarily a Disney movie or a Disney parks person, but a Disney person. All right guys, well I really hope you enjoyed getting to know me a little bit more. Thank you so much to everyone that entered my 1,000 subscriber giveaway and for those of you that submitted a question, we are now going to pick a winner to see who gets that gorgeous Disney Aristocats Cherry Blossom set. So thank you for everyone that put up with going to SurveyMonkey to do it because it has generated a really nice spreadsheet that is here on my laptop. Everything is numbered and we are just going to use a random number generator. So let me pull up random.org. All right, so we are going to generate and we have number, if that'll focus and you can see it, we've got number four. Let's pull up our spreadsheet and see who that is. Number four is Lauren Matsumoto. 
So congratulations, Lauren. Oh my gosh, I am so excited to send you this prize set. I really hope you enjoy it. If you are watching this, I will be messaging you very shortly since I've got your email address here. That way I can get your address and get this shipped out to you as soon as possible because we are about to be moving out of here in just like two more days basically. So this will be on your way very soon. Thank you again to everyone who has entered and subscribed. This is definitely not going to be the last giveaway and it seems like you guys liked Japan giveaways, so I will definitely keep that in mind for the future. That is it for today. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you have any questions for me that I did not cover, I know there were a lot of questions, like literally over 200 questions, so obviously I couldn't answer them all, but if there's something you're dying to know, feel free to just leave it in the comments and I will type you back a nice little answer. And again, congrats to Lauren for winning the prize set. I really hope you enjoy. All right guys, I will see you very soon. Thank you so much. Bye.